Hey guys, I'm Tom Friedhoff. I'm an engineer here at Active Lamp. So Drupal 8 is finally out and it's awesome. Mainly because of the decisions made in Drupal Core to adopt practices from the larger PHP community. Several years ago, a group was formed called the PHP Framework Interoperability Group. You may have heard of them as PHP Fig. Basically, these guys have been writing PHP standards for how you should write PHP applications. They call these standards PSR, PHP Standards Recommendations. If you've been around the PHP community for a while, you've probably heard of PSR0 or PSR4, the class autoloading standard. But if you go check out their website, they've defined all sorts of standards uh, for how you should be writing your PHP code. You can go check out this link right here for more details. Today, I'm gonna to talk about class autoloading, specifically PSR4 in Drupal 7. Most modern PHP frameworks these days are using this recommendation, including Drupal 8. But what if you wanna use the autoloading recommendation in Drupal 7? Well, it's not built into Drupal 7. That's where X autoload comes to the rescue. We've been using this module for the past three or four years. It's been around forever, but this module still seems like it's one of those hidden gems that a lot of Drupal developers don't know about. Let's go check out the page real quick on drupal.org. So here's the project page. As you can see here that as of the 5.x version, uh, the D8 style PSR4 is built into the module. You don't have to do anything in your module file uh, to enable this. All you have to do is enable the module and you can start using namespaces uh, right away. Also, if you scroll down here, you can see that uh, in their performance section, they actually uh, have some APC caching or opcode caching. And so the X autoload module will actually add uh, settings into your performance uh, page uh, within your Drupal site to be enabled. All right, so what is PSR4? What is X autoload? Let's jump into some code so I can show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna set up a quick Drupal site and I'm gonna use the command the drushqd to do this. So as you can see here, we're gonna download uh, Drupal 7.41. Oops, uh, I should put a dash in there. Uh, we're gonna make the account password admin into a directory called QD. Uh, and I want the X autoload module, we want views module, we want the develop module. And then I also want to enable uh, the views UI module. So let's go ahead and execute this command. All right, so there's my, my brand new uh, Drupal site. And so if I come over here to structure, and then views, uh, you can see that the views UI is enabled for me. And so I'm gonna write a custom module here uh, to show you guys how you can actually use X auto load. And for this example, I'm gonna actually write a views handler. Since views for the most part is object oriented, that'd be a good example to show where you can start using uh, class auto loading right away. And so let me open up uh, PHP Storm. And let's create a new project here. All right, so uh, there's the directory that got created. And I'm gonna just go ahead and hit OK, create this new project in PHP Storm. Um, cool, close that. And all right, so there's our Drupal site there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new module uh, in this site and let's just create folder and called it my, actually, let's put it in the custom directory. All right, PHP Storm's nice because it notices that this is actually a Drupal site. So I'm gonna enable the Drupal support real quick and say this is a Drupal 7 site. Cool. Uh, all right, so now let's, uh, let's code out this module. Okay, and so one of the things that I want to make sure uh, that we have with X auto load is I want to make sure that it's at least the 5.0 version. So we'll put this little string in here so that you can enable it without the 5.0 version. And that way the PSR4 um, uh, functionality is baked in by default. Um, so to write a, a views plugin, you have to implement uh, one hook in your module file and that uh, Hook is called, there it is, Views API. And so we can see because we enabled uh, this as a Drupal site within PHP Storm, it uh, gave us that hook uh, auto completion for us. And then 
Uh, and in this hook, you, have, you just have to return an array with which API version that you're using for views. Cool. So now that we have uh, this hook defined, we can actually define another hook within our uh, mymodule.viewsInc, uh, because if this hook is in the module, views will automatically look for a, a hook views data uh, within this file, and so we're gonna we're gonna write another hook. Okay, so uh, this isn't a tutorial on how to write views handlers. Uh, I'm gonna go through this real quick, uh, but I just want to show you guys how you can use the xAutoload functionality uh, when you're defining your new handlers. And so we're just gonna return another array describing uh, what handlers this module provides. And so this is gonna be in the views namespace. We're going to give our handler a title. And then this is where views is looking to see where uh, your handler is actually defined. What class do we need to load uh, for this handler? And so that takes an array. And then in this uh, section right here, this is where it's actually going to take the class name. And you would typically put your class here. So my class goes here. Uh, and uh, if you're doing this without X auto load, you'd have to go into your my module info file and then uh, declare that file as needing to be loaded when a class is loaded. Uh, but we don't have to do that since we're using X auto load. Uh, and so we'll fill this class in here uh, in a second. And so let me show you how X auto load um, uh, works now. And so uh, PSR4 basically is a naming convention. Uh, that allows your autoloader within Composer or uh, in this case the xAutoload to be able to find a class that's found based on the way your class is named. And so the way xAutoload works uh, is you need to create a directory called source and uh, within that directory now you can you can define folders based on how your your class is named. And so this will make more sense here in a little bit, but I'm just gonna create some folders and then you'll see uh, what I'm talking about once I've actually named the class. And so here uh, I've got my source directory. I'm going to create uh, a directory structure based on what I'm actually uh, doing. And so uh, we're building a views handler. So I'm gonna create a directory called views and then within the directory uh, views, I'm gonna create another directory called uh, handlers, and then maybe within handlers, I'm gonna create another directory called uh, area because I wanna separate my field handlers from my area handlers, from my filter handlers. Uh, it's just a nice way of being able to um, keep your code uh, nice and clean and, uh, and organized. And so within this, this area uh, handle, this is where I'm gonna actually create the PHP class. And so with PHP Storm, they have a nice little uh, create your PHP class uh, dialog. And so I'm gonna call this uh, my cool handler. And then it's gonna say, what's the Drupal namespace? And so the way this works um, with X and this and this is also the way that it works in, in um, Drupal 8 with the Drupal 8 auto loader is uh, you first, your namespace starts off with Drupal and then you put in your module name. So our module name is called my module. And then you basically follow the directory structure that's here. And so uh, we're, we've got a handlers directory. We have an area directory. And so that's the namespace. And so when I hit okay, this created a class called my cooled handler with this namespace right here. And so the way you reference this, the full path to this class, or the, excuse me, the full class name is actually this namespace plus the class name. So I can take this here and go back to my uh, 
hook views data and put that information right in there. And so now what this tells views is that when you're looking for area handlers, I want you to load this class. And what XAutoLoad does is it is it will actually load this class from the defined directory structure that we just created over here. And so now we don't have to actually add this into our info file to have that auto load. And this is how most PHP uh, frameworks and systems work nowadays is uh, by defining classes with PSR4 namespaces. This is a PSR4 namespace. And so we'll go ahead and save that. <clears throat> And so let's go ahead and build out uh, this class just so you guys can kind of see how this works. Um, and so since we're making a, a um, area handler for views, we're going to extend the views uh, handler area. And you can see here that it automatically put this little forward slash here saying that this class is actually in the root namespace because within this file, we're, we're only working within this namespace. And so within this class, there's really only one method that we need to uh, use, which is called render. And this will, in this method, you just render what you want it to render. So I'm gonna say, this is my cool result. And so uh, that's basically our, our area handler. Let's go enable the module and see if this actually works. So let's go to our modules, scroll down here. There's my cool module. It uh, depends on X auto load. So X auto load will automatically uh, be enabled. Once we enable that, cool. And so now if we go over to the views UI and add a new view, and we'll just call this something and continue and edit. When we come in to add an, an area, we can see that here is my custom area, makes a cool API request or something. And so if I add that and then display even if there is no result and save it, and then I go to the actual page, this is my cool result. So it's basically using whatever we've rendered in this render function. So what's cool about this is with the, this handler, you basically just have to return what you want to render. And so this could be uh, you know, an API request. Uh, for example, my API request. Uh, and you could do all your cool logic in here. You can include another uh, PHP class in here and reference that. And so let me just give you a quick demo on that. Real quick, I'm gonna download a composer dependency just so I can demonstrate that. And so after downloading that, basically, uh, this isn't the way you're supposed to do things. You, you should use a module called Composer Manager when you're using composer dependencies. But I basically wanted to get uh, uh, some code in my module that my IDE can see so I can demonstrate uh, how namespaces work. And so for example, if uh, in this method here I wanted to parse an HTML file, uh, I just downloaded the YAML uh, component from Symfony, I can actually instantiate that uh, doing this. And so my IDE is gonna automatically pick up that the YAML uh, class is in this directory. And so if I if I choose that YAML, you know, now I've got my, my little parser object. Uh, and you can see up here that my IDE automatically put a use statement in here so that it knows that when I'm using YAML, uh, the YAML class, it should go find it in this section here. And that's the beauty behind PSR4 and auto loading is you can now write much more uh, modular code and discrete components and include them uh, as you need within your classes. I actually think this is the, the wrong class. I think it's uh, actually called parser within the YAML. Yeah, so there we go. And so I just changed that to a parser. And so you can see we're using the parser there. We don't need this line anymore. But uh, within your IDE, now you get all the auto completing uh, in there. 
And uh, so that just makes things uh, really nice when you're working with object-oriented programming. Now this implementation isn't going to work, or I don't, at least I don't think it's going to work. Like I said, you're gonna wanna use Composer Manager, which basically takes this uh, Composer JSON file that we created when I executed that command, Composer Require. Uh, the Composer Manager module actually takes all Composer JSON files within enabled modules and puts it into one Composer JSON at the Drupal root so that all modules can share uh, any of the PHP dependencies that were pulled in. I hope that shows you the possibilities we have within Drupal 7. We can leverage PHP recommended standards right now in Drupal 7. You don't have to wait for Drupal 8. Go now and write solid code. Use interfaces, dependency injection. You don't have to wait for Drupal 8. Drupal 8 is our preferred CMS, but for our clients that aren't ready to make the leap to D8, Using XAutoLoad with Composer Manager takes that bitter taste out of D7. Thanks for watching. I'm Tom Friedhoff, and until next time, stay active. <laughs>